Every woman, daughter, mother, auntie, grandmother should watch, share and like this video and even men because men get breast lumps too. So if this video spreads awareness and saves one life, then for me it's worth it. What you really want to know is how do I know that my breast lump is not cancer or could be cancer? Okay, let me give you two real life stories first of all to make this a bit clearer. A lady in her late 40s comes to me. She's had a lump in her left breast for about five years. The lump was getting smaller. She's also had a mammogram which showed that the lump was not suspicious. However, she was getting persistent pain in the lump. So I was like, the lump is getting smaller. The mammogram has shown nothing suspicious. There really isn't much to do. However, there was a few points in the history that was of concern. The fact that she's had a lump for five years and also the fact that the lump was becoming painful. So my instinct was to send her to the breast clinic and three weeks later, she comes back to me and also to thank me for sending her to the breast clinic because apparently she had the aggressive form of breast cancer, which obviously needed treatment and she ended up having a mastectomy, which is removal of the breast and chemotherapy. So looking at this case, usually with lumps, you'd be more worried if they were getting bigger because breast cancer cells usually spread. However, in her case, the lump was getting smaller. Also, she's had a mammogram, which you would have thought is reassuring because it showed that the lump was not a suspicious lump. However, she was also of the theory that the mammogram, and this is something that I will discuss in another video, she was of the theory that the mammogram had caused the pain because she started having the pain, which was more pronounced after the mammogram. And she also was of the theory that the mammogram had done something to the lump to become cancerous. As for anyone who's been through a mammogram, as you would know, there's like two plates, which clamp on the breast, I think they can be quite painful for some. And there's this theory going around that mammogram could somehow disperse or cause trauma to the breast, which can lead to cancerous cells. Now, here's my second story. I had a 20 year old lady who had just given birth. She was breastfeeding. She had pain in her breast and signs of what you would think is a breast infection because she had pain, she had swelling, she had redness and the breast was quite warm to touch. So she went to the emergency department and they diagnosed her as having a breast abscess. They gave her some IV antibiotics and some oral antibiotics to take home. However, the treatment was not working. So she eventually had a scan of her breast, which unfortunately showed that she had an aggressive form of breast cancer. So I've got two ages here. I've got a lady in her common late 40s going on to her 50s. Then I've got a lady who's just entering into her 20s, both with aggressive breast cancers. And that's a point that age is not a discriminatory factor when it comes to cancer. Now, if you go on Dr. Google and maybe do a search for signs of breast cancer, you see the usual signs for what to look out for, such as changing the size, shape and skin of your breast, any new lumps or swelling in the breast or armpit, any changes to the skin of the nipples, such as any discharge or bleeding and breast pain. Please, by all means, be aware of the possible signs. However, let me tell you that a lot of these symptoms we do not see in everyday practice because this is a textbook definition of what to look out for. In most cases, you might not even have a lump when it comes to breast cancer, or you might not be able to feel a lump because the lump is quite discreet, quite small. You might not have breast pain or any of these symptoms. And this is why we stress the importance of self-examining your breast, which I'll talk about later. Now I can go into the different types of breast lumps such as fibroadenoma or breast cysts, but what you really need to know is that you just need to be familiar with your breasts and know what you need to do if you find a lump. Because this diagnosis are only done after you've had tests such as scans, for instance, or a biopsy. For example, I could tell you that, yeah, fibroadenoma, you know, your lump will be like a mouse moving around the breast, it's smooth, tender. However, you're not going to feel your breast lump and thinking, oh yeah, that's a fibroadenoma because it moves around, it's smooth and tender. That's not how it works. I mean, only a brave doctor would look at a breast lump without a scan and say, yes, that's definitely a fibroadenoma. You don't have to worry about it. But that makes sense if you've had a previous breast lump that's already been diagnosed as a fibroadenoma and you're worried about any possible changes in that same lump. However, if the lump is getting bigger or painful, I would usually refer you to the breast clinic anyway because who's to know what can happen with a fibroadenoma? Could it become cancerous in the future? Possibly. And also, what if you had another lump beside your pre-existed lump that's benign, which is a new lump, you would need to be referred to the breast clinic anyway for further assessment. So this is where breast lumps can get tricky. Now, of course, there are exceptions, especially in younger women who are going through the hormonal changes. You might notice that a few days before your periods or during your periods, your breasts become more tender or lumpy, and this usually resolves 
after your next period. But if the changes are persistent, then of course you need to let the doctor know. This is why I cannot stress enough the importance of self-examining your breasts. You should check your breasts at least once a month. Doing it while having a shower or in front of the mirror is a good routine. The best time to do it is a few days after your period ends, when your breasts will be less lumpy, they will be softer and not swollen or tender. Now, if you're a woman, you do not have regular periods or you might be postmenstrual, then you might want to pick a day each month to examine your breasts, such as the first day of every month. And you want to press firmly with the pads of your fingers, not the tips, but the pads of your fingers. So you can start with any breast. You can move the right hand over your left breast in a circular motion, filling with the pads of your fingers, making sure to check all over, including the armpit as well, because you can have lumps in the armpit as well. And then you want to move over and do the same for the left breast. The first step is also to know your breast. Know what changes are normal and what's not. Because your breast changes when it comes to age, puberty, menstrual cycle, pregnancy, breastfeeding, and during the menopause. Now, if you're asking me, how do I know if my lump is cancer or non-cancerous? I mean, I can start by saying most non-cancerous lumps tend to be smooth, more mobile, and you might notice that they tend to occur just before your periods, while a cancerous lump tends to be hard, fixed, and you might have an unusual shape or irregular shape of the lump. But a cancerous lump, as you can see from my two real life stories, can also be big or small, hard or soft, painful or painless, just like a non-cancerous lump. So listen, I would not advise that on finding a lump, you try and self-diagnose yourself because you're going to give yourself unnecessary anxiety and we all have different perceptions of what's hard or fixed or mobile. I could tell you how many patients I've seen that will tell me that their lump is hard and when I do feel the lump, is actually quite soft to me or they will say it's fixed and when I feel the lump is actually mobile. But remember that having a lump does not necessarily mean that you've got cancer. 90% of breast lumps are actually benign, meaning that they're non-cancerous. But also remember that not all breast cancers present with lump or pain. So look out for other changes. As I mentioned, you know, you need to be examining the breast, looking at the symmetry. Is one breast smaller than the other? Looking at the skin of the nipple, is there any rash? such as eczema or any changes to the areola around the nipple? Does the skin look puckered like an orange appearance? Looking for any unusual discharge, bleeding from the nipple? As well as it's also important to make sure that you always examine the armpit, looking for any lymph nodes or lumps in the armpit. And if you notice any unusual changes in your breast, you should be speaking to a doctor or a nurse. Now, I hope you found this video useful. Please drop some comments below. Please share and like this video.